Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Are you hey okay? In your neck of the woods, so what up? What up? Man as a respect man, are your girl, Debbie from Donga Yard. Welcome you all to the Jamaican kitchen. Welcome once more. It is the Jamaican cooking journey. If you're new right on over here, special welcome. Those of you who are there with me from the beginning of this journey, and you're still here, Manners and respect. On today's episode of the Jamaican cooking journey, we are going to be doing some peppered steak. Peppered beef steak. I can do peppered chicken steak. Check out peppered pork steak, which I hear people talk about a lot. And what I notice when they say peppered steak, you can do peppered fish steaks. But you know what? We are going to launch ourselves into those different type of meat steaks. Yes, I think I have a few chicken steaks videos of pork steaks, yes, and beef steak, even mutton pepper steak. But we're using the good old beef, which I do have a video of already. There are different ways of doing pepper steak, also stew beef, as I told you. I'm going to be doing it almost similar to the one that I have before, and I'm going to leave the link to that one, let you go check it out. For me to do a different version of peppered steak and stew beef, I have to get younger beef than this, which sometimes is very hard to get. I have to get the beef that is slightly pink in color, which tells me that the animal that this meat is from is really young, tender, because the method that we'll be doing it, we'll be using to do it, that method requires a tender cut or some tender pieces of meat. But as soon as I reach to my butchers and see him with that type of beef or pork, we will do that for you, okay? We will do that different stew beef, as I told you before, and we'll do the peppered steak a different way. And remember, we're gonna be launching out into different types of meat peppered steak. So for my beef peppered steak, I have here some crushed pimento seeds which get powdery. I like to do this. This is just me. I am a Jamaican woman. And these are some of my herbs and spices that are really popular. popular. When I can put my hand pan easily in my country. So I try to use them. I try to utilize them. Rosemary. Yeah, we have rosemary enough for Jamaica. So I have some dried one here. And I am going to put some rosemary as opposed to time dry time so remember this is just one kilo I don't think I'd said that and the aroma is so beautiful try to get rosemary into your cooking more family dried or green it doesn't matter rosemary is nice it's nice it has a nice flavor this is one kilogram of peppered steaks cut like that so I think this is enough and this amount of dry rosemary it's good remember when you're cooking try to remember a little about proportion and using proportion doesn't mean that you've got to measure. You can't feel the way around it. This is my special dried basil. So I'm going to be putting some in there. And you all know that. If you don't want to put these, I am just sharing with you what I am putting. And that is enough. I don't want to go too much and get this stuff over seasoned. A little parsley. Oh, that was the, that was the parsley. A little basil right here now. Hey, my girl, you show me, man. Yeah. So a little basil and a little parsley. So we get with three dried herbs. We're going to put a little bit of a salt because we're going to use this. So I don't want to use too much salt. You know, in other thing, yeah, one kilo. So this is about like less than half teaspoon of salt for now. Remember, no matter what, use less salt at the beginning. When we are going to the engraving down, if we need a little more, we can always add it. That's never a problem. Okay? These are what I'm using all dried. I like to put <clears throat> a little gig of ginger. Ginger helps with a little tenderizing. And it also helps with digestion. I'm going to go grate a little of this ginger. A must for me in any form of cooking, any dish. I could have even sardine. I'm putting some fresh garlic. One, one kilo of peppered steak and I'm using five pegs. 
green scallions and I'm using the top part. And some people say, Debbie, what about onion? I don't put onion in everything. Because to me, sometimes the flavor of onion in certain things, it could have really stay. That's just me, you know, okay? The flavor of onions in certain stuff, it could really stay for me. So I'm not so keen on onions in everything that I do, okay? And I'm doing free handedly. So I'm soon come. Okay, when you go to my other peppered steak video, it might be done in a different manner. I may grate my veggies, my, my seasons, I may chop, I may mash, I may use other stuff. Okay? Remember in cooking, you don't use the same thing every time. You not you know you don't use the same seasonings every time the same way. I don't. Okay? And I always say there are other ways. I'm putting some soy sauce in this soy sauce that we're going to give it the color. Okay? And you may, I'm going to use some paprika. But when we're finished cooking this pepper and steak, I want to make a nice, thick, colorful, flavory sauce to go with this. And you know, these bell peppers are to enhance the pepper steak for coloring. Also, it adds a little extra flavor you know so as I was saying you may see me chop you may see me mash you may see me grate and maybe you may see me rub up with some paprika paprika gives color it doesn't give any flavor just mineral unless it's a smoke one okay so you can put your paprika whenever you want I'm reserving my paprika to make that final you know finishing sauce so right here, I think I'm ready to get my and it smells so good. So we want to get our, our thing all rubbed in. I'm using my spoon here to make sure so that it's soy sauce that is being distributed all over. Because you want it coming with, you know, a little dark color. You don't want when it starts cooking. And you got to add a little water then you find yourself having problems with the color it starts getting white on you as opposed to stay on the darker side so i think we'll go with just a little bit more and at this point you don't want to go too dark and this okay keep good and it don't pan it and all of that and this is a real kitchen because at some point when you buy a bottle of soy sauce it finish in a steer in a size as all the while so it finish on this I may have to show you so I'm not left-handed but I try to use both hands and you're to try to do that so you must try to make sure you can't angle yourself with both hands in the kitchen in case you get burned every real chef not chef every real cook gets burned every once you're cooking and you ramp up and you play up with the kitchen and stuff you'll get burned so try to learn even though you're right Andy. try to learn that in case you know you get a little burn suppose you're doing a catering and some oil splash on you what are you gonna do turn the stove off and go sit down for how much hours to cool that burn whilst you, you you know people are waiting you're offering a service so try to learn that you can use both hands so you can have some ice or some ice pack one that one you're cool while you're using your left hand to do stuff a little tip for you right there so using my left hand to rub in and see I have the perfect looking stubby so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna rub this in some more get it covered on with something that will keep the flavor in and I'm gonna leave it for about 45 minutes to one hour in the interest of time on this video this can be done overnight that would be fine it can be done a week ahead of time and put it in a nice airtight container you can freeze it when you're ready for cooking you can take it out overnight or some hours ahead of time thaw it in the refrigerator take it from the freezer thaw it from the refri thaw it in the refrigerator take it and put it back on your cupboard to come to room temperature you're good to go so can you see me next we have a cook i am back family and i have this skillet here I will be just sort of like 
half cooking, I can pre-cooking it off in the skillet. I'll be putting it up, putting it in my pressure. And I could have done it in the pressure, but I wanted it to see what I'm doing. Because for me, anything that, that can go in the pressure cooker as a Jamaican, to save time and also to save gas, that's me. So if you don't want to use your pressure cooker, you can do it all the way in your skillet. Try to use something that is heavy. Certain type of cooking, you use heavy skillet. Jesse is a heavy skillet. You have some real kind of cast iron or so heavy something there. When you're cooking certain type of meat like that, you, you, you would deem chewy. The heavy skillet is best. Why? Because of the heavy skillet holds more heat. So even though it's on maybe a low heat, there is also some extra heat trapped within. Because them something there, when them type of something and Jesse and them something there, when them get that, a forever them take for cook down, for cool down. You see what I say? As opposed to something light where, you know? So every, if you notice, people who have cookbooks out and recipes for the people who are so obsessed with recipes and methods, certain of them says use a heavy skillet. They have the reason, they have their reason why. And maybe sometimes they tell you, maybe sometimes they don't. Somebody put one little piece of plastic wrap over it. So I have this here sort of. You know, so you, want, you don't want to hot it, you know. You don't want to eat this thing too when you look, you see it a flame up, you know. No matter what I say, everlasting. You just want to eat it, but when you put your meat in there, you get this season. And you want to start off with this nice color, you know, for your peppered steak, right? So, I am on, I would say I am on medium right there. So you want to get this all locked in, you know. With the eat and I know you want to see if you can just move around the flavors then. You see what I said with a little oil at the bottom. If you want to use a little margarine or a little melted butter, if you even have a little used oil, a little used beef oil or something. How about I use no fish oil? Uh -uh, like that, okay. Your water, hot water, must be here being prepared. That's mine, and all like that. So you want to keep doing this for on and off occasionally or on and off for a pretty good three minutes at that point now we are gonna need little moisture in it that is where your hot water is gonna come in so you want to leave it right there you also want to think about covering it because you want to get this thing the whole aim here is to get this thing cooked tender so you know once start to cook it and deal with it a way that when it finished now it end up trashy and barky, huh? On the medium, come in every now and then for three minutes to give it a stir. And when we are ready to put a little lamb liquid, we will come back and I show you. I'm gonna be cooking it in my pressure pot, which will save me some time. If you have your what they call it, your, it's the same thing, electric um, pressure cooker. If you have that, or your instant pot, yeah, it's the same thing as um, electric pressure cooker. You do it in there. If you want to do it like this stove top, do it. If you want to use your slow cooker, do it. It's going to take more time. My soon come. Right back at your family. And this is how it looks. So, we have been in the skillet. I think we have been in the skillet for about five minutes. And this is how it looks. So, I'm going to turn the flame off now. Because I want to go into my pressure cooker. So... For me to go into my pressure cooker, this is what I do. And what I normally do, I, when I pre-cook my meat, before I put it into the pressure, I want to taste, I want to test, taste it, or taste test it, to see the, where it's at. That enables me to know how long I am to leave it in my pressure cooker. I've done a video which is so under watch for people who use this pressure cooker or would like to use a pressure pot. Okay? And then you've got to you have got to know your pressure pot. I know my pressure pot. Questions are asked about the pressure pot in my comment section. Debbie, when you put it in a pressure cooker, and a boil it boil. Maybe for some people, but not for me. So let me show you how I know it now go boil. What I want to do. I want to taste, even though they are small, you saw the meat, it was red. So me want to taste now, 
after five minutes, you know, and the, and the eat there in the skillet. The consistency, the which part is it? How tough it is? Simple. In layman terms, how tough this piece of sitting, how bark it is. Not too barky, but I say it could be more barky, but not so barky. So, knowing the nature of my pressure pot, I'm gonna turn it out in there now and I'm gonna leave it for three minutes with a little water. I'll show you, which I do some, I have done so many times. So, I want to get it out. Be careful, be careful. Cooks and chefs and all of them, new cooks, those who are not ready for cook yet, and I try for cook. Try to be careful, hold yourself off, and all of that. If you have big boobs like mine, but I push it up, I might end up in a pressure cooker too. We got pressure. Get burned. So we make sure so we get all of that. Should come up camera girl in the pressure pot. I'm gonna rinse out this little something and all of that. I'm gonna put this to the side, this liquid, and I may not use all of it. Look at me. Remember I told you when we are pressuring, we just use a certain amount of water just to barely cover what we have in the pressure cooker. That is what tells you that it will not boil. If you full up the pressure cooker water, of course it will go in there boil. Mm -hmm. But when you put this just small amount, whilst it's pressuring for cook, that steam that builds up in the pressure pot, the meat will absorb it. That is why Tago cooks so fast. I may love pressure cooker. You might not, but I do. If you love it, say something in the comment section. So, this is it. So, you have a small amount of liquid to work with in there. Monitor your pressure cooker. Know your pressure cooker. Time your pressure cooker. Make sure you know how many minutes. Make sure you monitor the, 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 the level of the heat under it. So we are going to do that. Eh? Look at me here. This is my pressure cooker. I know about it. I don't know about yours, baby. So I'm going to put on the pressure cooker. Yeah. From 1989, I have this pressure cooker. Okay? On a little medium heat. And remember, it starts from the pressure cooking starts from when the, the steam builds up and starts releasing that as you lock it when the steam builds up in there and the pressure is being released that, that's when the real pressure cooking begins so we're gonna leave it there and i like that we're gonna be coming back to this skillet because we have a gravy dog in the skillet now and i like that so once that is happening and as a true cook in your kitchen where you run your kitchen and your kitchen around you we have got some more stuff to do. I want to finish this peppered steak with a nice, thick, rich sauce. So, may I go go and make it whilst that is happening? Because that now going to take me a time. Okay, I'm going to be using some of the Jamaican mukbang and the vlog. And she has a, a garlic sauce which I got here. And I have a spicy garlic. For me, my love garlic. So, look here. I think this, wow, this is so beautiful. So this is a bit thinner than this one, so yeah, I got true. I think I can pour all of them together. Yep. And what I want to do right here, I want to shake them up. I want to get some of this sauce. Alain! Stew beef with garlic sauce. So I'm going to be using some of this as the base, yes. And these are all hunks and chunks of Jamaican flavors and spices and seasonings. I want to add a little of this um, red wine, something, something. So I'm going to put a little right here now. I'm going to want to go too much in it and all of that. I also want to put a little Worcestershire. Call it what you want. I call it what I feel to and all of that. I'm putting that and now I'm going to be using, utilizing my paprika right here. Remember I told you in the prior clip, or prior, some prior clip, that you could use your paprika to season up to. But I want to put it right here. Because I'm looking for that special color in my finished peppered steaks. And all of that. 
nice little marinade I'm making to put down. So when this thing is pro wow, oh my god, the camera girl, you smell it? Wow, you smell it? It's so nice, smell it. It's beautiful. Camera girl, she in our cell, she in our mood. So this is the color and all of that. So we're leaving that to come together whilst I go prepare the bell peppers. So in the next clip, you'll see me preparing the bell peppers. Okay, so what I did, looking at it, I thought I wanted a more little, you know, a deeper little color. So I had it a little mushroom soy sauce that's extra flavor, you know. Camera girl asks a question and she does this all the time. She doesn't ask the questions on camera. I want those questions to be asked on camera, camera girl. She asks a question off camera. So mom, you could tell them that if they don't have this red wine marinade, what they could use. Just use a little of your regular red wine with not too, you know, like a low, you know, some um, red wine and have too much of a high um, amount of alcohol. You just use a nice little flavored red wine, you know, with a little vinegar put in there and a little troops of brown sugar, okay? To substitute the marinade, use a little red wine that is not so alcoholic up in a volume and a little troops of brown sugar to your taste and a little vinegar of choice, eh? And you make that nice little, that's a little red wine marinade. And I like that. I think camera girl need a, a channel. Please do comment. So now that we have gotten that out of the way. Yes, and I told you I did use a little of this. I also want to use, yes, I may never use no pepper. A little of this red pepper flakes. That is going to give it a little gig. Mm -hmm. You could use some chili flakes too. Now, if you hear that is a real kitchen, you hear the sizzle. It's coming up. From my pressure cooker and all of that you hear that okay so let's get this out of the way now we want to cut our peppers but some most of the times me myself we cut it in strips but today yeah I have to put up with the pressure cooker nice until I come off this clip we want to cut our bell peppers like this so I'm gonna be doing that this is how we are going to cut it. You can cut it in the strips. But today, that is how I'm going to do, be doing it. This is where now the real pressure cooking begins. That's how powerful this little thing is. Three minutes, may soon come. So now, fam, our pressure cooking is over. And this is what I have in there. If you want to consider it boiled, you can tell me in the comment section. So this is what I have. And look here. I gave it three minutes. I'm nearly get myself in that trouble. So let us get our flame on. I said I would finish it in that, but I think I'm just gonna finish it in my pressure pot. So, because you can see. What I did, I went ahead and I did some thin carrot slices. I give them, sort of pre-cook them. Now, this is our sauce. You saw me, I did it. So it is safe now to say this is a garlic and red wine sauce. So we want to get it right down in here. We'll be finishing it off, our pepper steak, with this nice, rich garlic and red wine sauce. It is safe to say. So, this is a thickness, and we have it there. I'm going to remove my carrot slices. I chose to cook them. I didn't want them to cook down in there to get them, you know, to make them have that dark color and all of that. So, wow. A little accident there fam something that splashed in my eye i told you to be careful what sure we are all timer we can't close one eye till it cool I was just telling you about that so we put our carrots in there and now it's the perfect time to add in our peppers you can go a little crazy with the as in, um with the bell peppers in the peppered steak you can go a little crazy because you know Enhances pepper sticks. They can't go like a crazy way. So look at me here. I don't know about you, but I just stir it up in there. You see that nice prettiness, and you want to do it how you want to do it. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna turn it down, and then I'm gonna give it about a minute and a half to let it just, you know, the, the steaks just come right down in there. But before I do that, I just want to taste for my final flavor. If me need 
only thing you're supposed to need is a little salt, which I hardly think I do. Me no need no salt, mama. Wow. Let's get our flame back up a little bit. I'm going to leave it in there to let the peppers just get just a little bit of cooking. We don't want them. We don't want the bell peppers cooking until them comes off like baby food, you know. No, no. So we're going to leave it right in there. And we're going to cover it down. Anything we find, we cover it down. I feel the kitchen. We don't have to have the prim and proper cover. So I'm going to give it a minute and a half. Baby, this is good. I have to give myself a thumbs up. I first made a thumbs up myself and cook nothing. Garlic, I think it's the garlic man and the red wine sauce. We don't want it dry out. We just want to get down in the sweet peppers and just infuse the pepper steak um, um, strips. My soon come. From my kitchen to yours, from my Jamaican kitchen to your family table to your palate and most of all to your stomach, it's garlic and red wine peppered steak or peppered steak in garlic and red wine sauce. Please do enjoy. Now, if you have liked this video, all I ask of you, give me a thumbs up. I'm not going to take out your credit card. Remember to make sure that you're subscribed to the Jamaican cooking journey and all the branch off channels. When you do subscribe, remember to hit the notification bell. When you press the bell, go to the side that has three options there and it has, it has one that says all. Press that one. Therefore, you will be notified when all my videos are being uploaded. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Remember to make sure you watch the videos. Remember to make sure you watch the little hands. That is how I got get a little thing to get stuff to do videos for you. This is how I get to buy stuff to give you these contents, you know. So if you don't watch my ads, them, you know, send me the palm of one. And I like that. So thanks for the love. Thanks for the support. Remember to leave your comments below in a principal and decent way. Share with me how you do yours. You want to try it? Try it. Let me know. Let me know. Send me a little picture of your finished um, peppered steak on Instagram. You want to serve this with mashed potatoes, some steamed vegetable, like some broccoli and some cauliflower, and all like that. Do you think a little nice coconut rice, and I'll bring that coconut rice video for you in the near future. Thanks for once more for the love and the support. In the description of this video and all my videos, my PayPal, my Cash App, my email, my business number, and all of those that you want to get on to me. Remember, eat, meet, and greet. Go to my Instagram page, and you will see what is happening there. Thank you so much. Remember to be you, do you. Most of all, make sure you love you.